And welcome everyone to our lunchtime discussion, part of our Way Forward Leader Lunch Break series. We are thrilled today to welcome Dr. Adrienne Fletcher from Case Western Reserve University. Dr. Fletcher serves as a faculty member in the Jack, Joseph, and Morton Mandel School of Applied Social Science, as well as the Assistant Dean of Diversity and Inclusion there. She brings to us today two decades of experience as a social work professional, where she has been a fierce advocate for child welfare. She helps many organizations deal with issues of cultural humility and how to create awareness of the growing complexities of race and culture. She is a favored presenter at many of our programs, and I personally always find her to be a voice of calm and serenity, and I think that's because she truly models the empathy that she will teach us to embrace today. So Dr. Fletcher, thank you so very much for joining us, and we look forward to hearing your insights. So thank you all very much for inviting me again to share. Hope everyone can hear me. I can see a hand. Perfect, perfect, good. All right, I am excited to be here, and I really do love your theme, the overall theme, the way forward, because it is true. We are looking for a way forward in the midst of this pandemic. I do not take it lightly that any of you are here sharing the space with us here today. <clears throat> so one of the first things that I'd like to do is to see if I can move my screen forward. Don't want to end the show. Would like to move. PowerPoint forward. I'm clicking. How about we just do next? That does work. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> just the other day, I was uh, scrolling on MSN and um, I heard former President George W. Bush seeking to give a word of calm to the nation. And uh, I really like what he said. Here was part of his uh, short speech. And I know you all can read this, but I will read it. Empathy and simple kindness are essential, powerful tools to national recovery. The suffering we experience as a nation does not fall evenly we rise or fall together. I thought that was pretty pivotal and pretty meaningful. And it really does capture what we want to discuss today. Empathy and simple kindness are essential, powerful tools to national recovery. Empathy and simple kindness are essential, powerful tools to personal recovery and also to recovery to our workers as we try to weather this pandemic. So it, this really is important to what we're going to be discussing today as a group. So as I said, I don't take it lightly that um, you are here today. So one of the first things <clears throat> that I would like to do is to honor your presence in this space. So I really would like to take a mindful moment and I would like for you to just take, we're gonna take a few seconds to do exactly what we are being asked to do on the screen. And so in quietness, we are going to inhale and exhale. So I am going to be quiet while we take the time to do this and center ourselves before we move forward.
so I've already gone ahead and changed the to the next slide. But before we really discuss the next slide, somebody process with me why that may have been important for us to, as we think about empathy, to center ourselves. Why would that have been an important process as we think about empathy? Anybody can just chime in. We're thinking about empathy, centering ourselves, being in the moment, being mindful. Why would this be important? Why would it be important perhaps at the beginning of a meeting with our team to just stop for just a moment to be here, right where we are. Anybody? What are your thoughts about that? Well, um, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, actually. Um, Hi, well, we, we, we need to be centered and, and quiet and at peace in order to um, listen mm -hmm. so that we can, you know, give empathy to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. Anybody else? Good afternoon. So remove any distractions, you know, mm -hmm. to, to focus. Okay, remove distractions. Mm -hmm. um, to actually live in the moment where we're at. Right. So that we're mindful for what we're doing. Right. Good, good. Anybody else? To, to be present and kind of what um, was just said, to be mindful and present and, and get your, your mentality focused on, on the present situation. Good, good. So, and everyone is correct. I think what we're recognizing is that this is in fact a tough time. Even without it being a tough time, if these were regular times, this is, a wise thing to do anyway, but in light of what we are all experiencing, it is wise to stop everything that we're doing so that we can focus on what we're doing, be present, so that we can take in the full experience, so that we can be where we are, so that we can be fully present. In fact, we are all experiencing a collective trauma, right? We are all experiencing a, a collective trauma. Sometimes as a therapist, I can recognize that my clients are experiencing a trauma and I can help them through that trauma, right? Sometimes as a physician, we can recognize that our, um, the person, our patient is experiencing a physical trauma, and we can help them through that trauma. But right now, in 2020, on May 14th, everyone in the Zoom space is experiencing a collective trauma. And as a result, many of us may actually be experiencing symptoms that we have not experienced in our, in our lives before, right? Or we may actually be experiencing experiences or symptoms that we had experienced in our past that are finding their way back into our present. Those, ex those experiences may be depressive symptoms, anxiety symptoms, symptoms like overeating, undereating, sleeping more, sleeping less. We are finding that many individuals in our communities are experiencing intimate partner violence perhaps that they had not experienced before or that they had. We are noticing that there is an increase in substance abuse, also child abuse. <clears throat> There's an increase in pornography and also grief-related symptoms. There is, in fact, uh, just collective trauma that we are all experiencing. It would be unwise for us to believe that our workers, our team members, are somehow not experiencing some of these things, right? So as individuals who are managers of organizations, as individuals who are perhaps CEOs of organizations, these are things that we want to be mindful of, that some of our 
team members, that some of our employees, that some of our workers might in fact be experiencing some of these trauma symptoms. So as individuals who are running organizations, these are things that we want to be mindful of. So we are experiencing collective trauma, right? And so we wanna be mindful of some of these things. So, <coughs> excuse me. What we do wanna be mindful of as individuals who are running, running organizations is that our workers are actually, some of them are single parents, some of them are single and have no other responsibilities at home. But some of them are single parents, some of them are parents who have partners, some of them are grandparents, some of them are part of that sandwich community where they are taking care of both children and they are taking care of parents. So the point here is that our workers have tremendous responsibility in their home. So they are in fact at home trying to work. So they are at home with the responsibility of their work. They are at home trying to educate their children. They are perhaps at home trying to parent their children and they are at home trying to, you can fill in the blank. So why don't we think about some of these parameters or some of what our team members are trying to do when they are at home. Right. So I would like for some of you to actually chime in right now and tell me what um, some of the uh, what some of your work protocol actually entails. So I'm really interested in what some of your um, what some of you do. So what are some of your work responsibilities? What you expect some of your employees to do while they are at home? I know what I am expected to do as an educator from Case Western Reserve, so what some of my responsibilities are. So I can see some of your names up there, but I could call on you, so I'm really interested in what you expect your workers to do while they are at home. What do you expect your team members to do? So I see Major, is it DeBerry? What do you expect your workers to do while they're at home? Uh, well, since I work for a credit union and part of our okay. part of our big job was to go out and engage uh, the community, uh, that's no longer an option. Okay. So I expect our team members to uh, still find creative ways to engage with the community, with our partners, while still providing uh, access and services from the credit union. Okay. All right. Good. Good. All right, so somebody else, tell me what is your expectation as far as work protocol is concerned while your team members, while your employees are at home? Deborah. Oh, Deborah, turn off your mic. Turn on your mic, I'm sorry. You're muted. Yeah, they must have automatically muted everyone. Right, right. Yeah, so um, I am the Vice President of Development and Marketing for the Achievement oh. Centers for Children. Mm -hmm. And so my team is responsible for the charitable support that comes into the agency, as well as our marketing and public relations and so on. Mm -hmm. So my team is working on fundraising um, in this time. And also we are having to pivot several of our events to virtual events. And mm -hmm. so we are working on all of our marketing, public relations um, work and our fundraising work from home in a very interesting time. <laughs> that sounds very interesting. Okay, who else? Who can share what the expectations are now that your team members, your employees are working from home? And remember to unmute your mic if you can. Anybody else? I can't see any hands. I was waiting for somebody to, to, to do it, but I guess I'll do it too. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Aja Hardy. I'm uh, working with, with Case uh, in mm -hmm. some form or fashion, but also um, we are doing Regenerator. So we're an equity-based accelerator. We're a program that helps small businesses. And mm -hmm. we were already um, partially virtual because we're of our locality. We have 20 plus locations. We normally in co-working spaces. But this uh, 
forced us, for lack of a better word, to be fully virtual and to see how that works and how we can still keep engagement while we are virtual with not only our startups that we work with, but also our stakeholders. So we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. um, working, you know, doing happy hours within our, ourselves, a little bit tighter to happy hours, to be honest, but uh, we're doing, <laughs> doing those things, but also um, looking at how we can help the ecosystem as well. So we've created emergency response programming and doing one-on-one -on -one meetings. So it's, it's changed our role description a little bit um, to, to, be, to get that engagement that we would like to have and to feel like we're doing our purpose. Okay, good, good. So it sounds like some of you have really found a way to make working virtually a reality and to, to really make it work as it were. Does anyone else want to share some of the expectations of their employees or team members before we move on? Um, yeah, I would, I don't have employees, but okay. for those who might be um, working with grantees, we oh. kind of look at them that way. So we've been, um, creating Zoom meetings to connect with our grantees to, um, you know, be in touch with them during this time to connect, um, to keep them abreast of the things that are going on nationally um, in terms of uh, things that we'll do in terms of flexibility with reporting and moving to direct deposits so we could still get their disbursements and just, you know, keeping um, things going, even though we have to navigate things differently in this environment. So. Um, that's what we've been kind of doing. That's what I've been doing. It. Yeah. Well Navigating things differently in this environment. Thank you. Thank you. So, so all of our team members, employees are also people, right? Who somehow have to navigate their responsibilities in a different way since they are for the most part doing this work from home. And I would like to add that you are also an individual who has to navigate. So this discussion that we are having is not just about your team members or your employees, it is also about you and how you are managing this piece. And that is a very important piece that we cannot leave out. So I really like to start with how we first build empathy and these four building blocks on the screen, as it were, are how we built empathy. And um, they might appear initially as kind of warm and fuzzy, um, and, and they might feel like that to an extent, but they do, um, behind them, come with a very um, ob objective ways um, as to how to build them out, as it were. So, so being kind might sound soft and fuzzy, but it does have uh, objective tools behind it, as it were. So the first one is to be kind. And, and, and first and foremost, as an employer, as a CEO, as an individual who runs an organization, as the head of a team, I would urge you first and foremost to be kind to yourself to be self-compassionate, and then to show compassion toward others. And the way that I like to think about that is if you have toilet paper, share it with someone else, right? You know how we feel about that. Secondly, to be aware of yourself and also, secondly, to be aware of others and what their needs might be staying connected, and we've heard this mantra over and over again, um, during self-isolation, which we have been doing a pretty good job of, I hear. Um, and if we have had to quarantine, because we have had symptoms of COVID-19, um, to somehow stay connected with those that we care about and with others. Um, over Easter, this was a meme that I sent out to others. I quarantined with my peeps over Easter 2020, and it was good. All right. So lastly, we also want to be considerate and uh, practice that social distancing, right? So I do have numerous masks that um, when I do go out, I wear them. So these are the building blocks of empathy. And uh, we want to always be aware of each of these to somehow be kind, to be aware, to say, stay connected, even if we are isolating ourselves or in quarantine 
and to be considerate in practicing social distancing. But first and foremost, we want to extend social empathy to ourselves as individuals who are leaders. And how do we do that? Well, we take stock of ourselves, we check in with ourselves. While I was teaching this semester, I always took time at the beginning of class to have my students check in with themselves and to ask themselves, how am I doing? And one of the ways that we can do that is to notice ourselves, to actually notice, and we can do this, we can notice our own circadian rhythm. How are we sleeping? Right, and that might not seem like a big deal, but it is actually a big deal. And I am just going to kind of scroll across and I am going to look into your eyes and I can see you and I can see right now whether you are smiling or not, whether you are looking at me and saying, what is she talking about? Those of you who actually are sharing your screens or not, and some of you are not. So I cannot see your eyes, Tanya. Blake, I can't see your eyes. Eminem, Nicole, Kim, June, I can't see your eyes, but I know you're there. Right, Adrian, Sarah, you're there, but I can't see your faces. Hi, Sarah, right? So I would ask you, Michael, Marianne, is it Asia or Aja? Aja, gotcha. I would ask you to notice yourself, to think about your circadian rhythm, to wonder about your sleeping habits because this means something. And it is always important for you to check in with yourself first before you check in with your team or your employees. How are you eating? How are you drinking? What are you drinking? How early are you drinking? This means something. What are you saying? What are you not saying? Ask yourself whether or not you need support. And if you do need support, are you getting the support that you need? As a team leader, how successful are you being? And if you are being successful in leading your team, have you noticed your successes? Right. So I need you all as team leaders to talk to me. Tell me about how you're checking in with yourself. Tell me about how successful you are being with stopping the motion of your daily work and checking in with yourself. Real quick, tell me how you're doing. Somebody unmute yourself and tell me how you're doing. Not very well. <laughs> Who's that talking? What's that? Who was talking? I'm sorry. Oh, Who's so hi, Adrian. It's Nicole Parker. Hi, Nicole. Um, Hi, I, I would say honestly, not very well. <laughs> okay. um, I, I do really try to um, have, you know, have moments where I, I'm actually homeschooling as well and, okay. and um, working from home. Mm -hmm. And so there are times where I'll just say randomly, kids, get outside, take your shoes and socks off, put your feet literally in the ground, ground yourself, take a deep breath. I know you need that because I need that. But um, overall, like on an everyday checking in with myself, I would say I, I'm, I'm not doing a, a really good job on that. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you for being so honest. This is not easy. We are not in an easy place. As I mentioned earlier, this is a collective trauma. And if we as leaders of organizations don't stop ourselves, we will not have the capacity to help our employees. Y'all know the mantra when we're on an airplane, Buckle yourself up first, put on your life preserver first, because you will not be able to help the other person until you have helped yourself. You will not be able to extend empathy until you have provided it for yourself. Other thoughts? Hi, this is Mary, and I actually get in my car and just take a drive and just look outside other than in my driveway. Mm -hmm. Good. That, Marianne, that is very good. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Yesterday, my daughter had to go to the pharmacy to pick up a prescription. And I told her she has two young children. They are less than a year apart. She's a crazy woman right now. I said, roll your window down and let the air blow in your face. I need you to look up at the trees and see the leaves. I need you to breathe. She said, really? I said, really? 
I need you to take in springtime, right? You have 10 minutes in that car by yourself and I need you to be mindful for just 10 minutes. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Uh, this is Major DeBerry. Um, hi, Adrian. Thank you for this, by the way. This is great. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we take a walk every day with our dog uh, after, after work. She gets done around five or six. And that's what we do. We take a walk. We catch up with each other. We talk and just enjoy being outside. Good. Perfect. Perfect. So, so check in with yourself and see how you were doing. I should have put that up. How are you managing? But you answered that question for me. How are you managing? Right? So next, we are going to take just a few minutes. We probably don't have 10 minutes to do this, but we do have a few minutes for you all to go into uh, breakout rooms and actually think together about how you are or are not checking in with your teams, with your employees. So I think you have a list of questions and these are the very same questions that you should have a list of. How are you checking in with your teams? What challenges are your employees facing? How are you able to support your employees? So you're gonna have a really quick discussion about this, and then you're gonna come back and we're gonna kind of check in with each other about how well you're doing or not. And we're gonna kind of share ideas about how you can um, better manage your teams and better Support your team members in the midst of COVID-19. So I'm gonna let you go into breakout rooms for maybe, I don't know, maybe about five minutes, Rachel, and then we can come back and have a bit of a discussion about that. So it looks like everyone's back. So let's talk about what you talked about. So I don't know who was in which room, but if we could have people just start to chime in about what they learned, about the challenges perhaps about, well, first let's start, let's start with, are you checking in with your team or not? Perhaps at the beginning of meetings, are, is anyone checking in with their team? Who'd like to start that off? Who'd like to share? Anybody? Who's checking in? Um, so I was in breakout session one, group, group okay. one. So everybody's been doing that. Great. Um, checking in with their team and figuring out ways they're going to connect and all that. Yes, everybody's doing that. Good. Perfect. Perfect. That's good. So why don't you go ahead and continue the conversation? Are there any challenges that team members are facing? Um, yes. We shared personally trying to navigate how to be employees um, because people have children and sort of so learning how to be more empathetic mm -hmm. um, let's see yeah basically those yeah okay okay and what about that whole idea about boundaries are individuals having a hard time setting boundaries at work between workspace non-work times and their devices is that an issue at all for team members we didn't get into that, but I'm sure everybody's kind of struggling with it. <laughs> All right, good. All right, so let's go to another team, perhaps to kind of field some of the other questions. Is anyone else able to chime in, perhaps about the last two questions? <clears throat> Anybody else want to chime in? I'm looking for unmuted mics. I don't know, someone in our group um, talked about um, scheduling when they're going to eat their meals and like when they're going to go for a walk so mm -hmm. that people at their office, if they look at their calendar and need to schedule something, um, sort of like know that that's not maybe a good time to schedule something and so that they're kind of also like more likely to stick with it because it's on their calendar. Okay, okay, so that seems to work. Was there anything else that your team discussed that seemed pertinent that you want to bring to the floor, Sarah? 
unmute yourself. That um, I think uh, this type of work can be more draining because to make up for the lack of physical presence, you have to be more on consciously, I think, like mm -hmm. to engage. And that can be a very different draining type of experience for a lot of people compared to like in-person type of draining, <laughs> which is a different feeling. So I think that theme ties in with like making sure you're scheduling time away to eat and walk or mm -hmm. um, unplug a little bit. Right, right. I agree, Sarah. It, it is very interesting. It's very different, completely different feel. Good, good, good. Who else from a different team? Someone else share just perhaps the overall tenor of the conversation and the discussion. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Adrian, this is Major. I was on team three. Yep. Okay. Uh, we really had a good time just getting to uh, know each other and, good. Good. and talk with each other. It was really a nice virtual networking thing where we talked with each other and found out how they're doing and, and what's for lunch and good tips and things like that. So, so Major, how are people doing? How are people doing? Um, lunch is uh, pretty much on your own. Grab, what, grab whatever you can find. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and it was uh, overall it seemed like everyone was doing, uh, doing okay. Okay. And, and, and Major, did you get a sense of how people's teams are doing? How are workers doing? Uh, I know for uh, I know for my team uh, we're probably going a little stir crazy. Uh, I, I work with a team of four and we're all equal. Um, we're a little stir crazy because we are all, you know, uh, engagement community engagement animals. We love to get out and that's part of what we do. But uh, because we haven't been able to do that, but overall we're we're doing well. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Okay. All right. So we only have a few minutes, I believe. So um, I was going to write while we report it out, but there's no need to do that because we've gotten past that. So are there, there are a few resources in your PowerPoint and you can take a peek at that. Um, before we finish, are there any questions, anything pertinent that we need to field as a group before we say goodbye to each other? So, so I kind of want to think about something as, as perhaps as we think about the, the country opening up, because that seems to be um, dominating conversation right now. I'm curious as to your thoughts about how one manages when you are not feeling safe about going back to your workplace, but your organization is going to reopen. What are your thoughts about how to best manage that piece? What does one do? Your organization, say Case Western Reserve is opening up tomorrow and I am not feeling safe about returning to work. How do we manage? As an employee, Nick, I see you nodding over there. What, what are you? What is your? Uh -huh, I saw you, Nick. I was on that square. How do we manage, Nick? What are your thoughts? Uh, it's a good question, and we've been talking about this a lot at the leadership center. Okay. Um, to to know that, and I think that we one of the things that we've learned on one of these calls is to really address what that fear is, um, and also to look at what are the the ways that we can work to to help with that fear. Um, and so what are the, if I'm afraid to come back, what are the things that I'm nervous about? Um, mm -hmm. And what are the ways that the organization is able to respond to and care for those fears? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the other thing that has been really helpful, and this is really integral, I think, to team dynamics, is what are those relationships there? That if I'm, if I'm fearful or nervous, do I have a good relationship with someone on my team that I can comfortably share that with? Or yes. am I hiding that fear in myself? Mm -hmm. So, so what you're suggesting is that my fear, I, hopefully I have a person that I can take that to, right? Very real fear. I can take that to, and there may be a way to manage it in real time. Correct. At the organization, right? Um, and it may, it may be able to be managed so that I can return, or perhaps there's a way for me to continue to work at home 
if that might be necessary, right? right? So there may be numerous ways to manage whatever might be causing me anxiety, correct? Okay, all right, good. Um, I'm not sure how much time we have left. Let me look really quick. We have one minute. All right, so I asked all of you to bring a snack, something that was meaningful to you. But before we get to that, I would like to share this with you. We are not working from home. We are at our homes during a crisis trying to work. That is a paradigm shift, right? We are experiencing a crisis, y'all. So we are at home in our little boxes trying to figure this thing out. This is not normal. And we keep trying to normalize it. We keep trying to normalize it. This is not normal. This is not normal. And I think we have to remember that. We just have to remember that this isn't normal, right? So we are not working from home. We keep saying we're working from home. We're not working from home. Some people do in fact work from home as a norm, but we're not working from home. We are at our homes during a crisis trying to work, most of us, right? So I asked you to bring a snack because we're gonna have a, we were gonna have a mindful moment. And what I wanted you to do was to take that snack and to eat it in a mindful way can you all see this? Let's see, I need to get to my picture. Have you all seen this? No, you can't really see it because of my screen, but it's, oh, maybe you can. It's emotional support candy. These are, these are M&Ms, they're peanut butter M&Ms. So if you have your candy, what I wanted you to do, and you can do it when we get off, is to, is to take one piece of candy, and to eat it very slowly and to just enjoy it. Just, 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 just enjoy it. Just to have some me time. I'm going to eat one more peanut butter M&M and then I have to throw the rest of it away lest I eat it all. So I wanna thank you all for this moment, for these 45 minutes that we've had together. And I would ask you to check in with yourselves so that you can check in with your employees your team members in a mindful way. So thank you for giving me 45 minutes of your day. All right. Adrian, thank you so much for the discussion today and for the mindful moment. I appreciate your time. And I'm gonna to look to Marianne for our wrap up today. Thank you, Rachel. And thanks so much, Dr. Fletcher. This was absolutely wonderful, incredibly helpful, a great life preserver and always remembering to put on our own oxygen mask first. So thank you for 